So now I have to mirror the, where's the little mirror thing? Just a second, I just gotta see this thing. Okay. Is this the mirror, is this the mirror thing? Okay, uh, which one, uh, where's the window for the smart board? Good. Now I'm going to go. Okay, great. All right. <laughs> oh, gosh, please. <laughs> okay, can everyone see? see. I'll take a picture here. So we went from 17 students that I should figure out, like, I should have brought you guys some sort of treat for even showing up here. Okay, let me take a picture here. Oh, no, no, you, we're, we're okay. You come in and sit in if you want. Okay, let's see. All right. Okay, uh, out there in virtual land, I don't know who's on and who isn't on. Uh, I sent an email out to everyone that I'm on Teams. So let me send that uh, out again. Just give me a second. And we'll go mail. And we'll say, uh, just give me a second here. I'll do a reply all, and I'll say uh, I'm I invited you all on Teams for class. Okay, today's date is Friday. What is it? Is it March 10th or March 11th? March 11th, 12:40 p.m. Okay. Being recorded. Okay, you guys out there in virtual land, you can hear me? Uh -oh. Yes. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, I'm not sure who's out there in virtual land. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. We are, um, we're gonna talk about subgroups today. We're gonna talk about subgroups. So today's date is uh, Friday, March 11th, 2022. Then uh, homework uh, extension until Wednesday after spring break. And then uh, feel free feel free to contact me over spring break with questions. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna try to do something here. I should have tried to do this earlier, is I need to extend the page. This is actually harder than you think. I don't know why. Just, okay. All right, great. So feel free to ask any questions. So, okay, let's take a look here. So we're gonna talk about uh, subgroups. We're gonna talk about subgroups today. So we're gonna say, um, let me make sure
Okay, so a non a non empty um, uh, sub of a group G is said to be a subgroup. So a non-empty subset H of a group G is said to be a subgroup of G. If um, if under if under the uh, product of G is itself a group. Okay, so one of the key things to mention here is is that the operation stays the same. So operation, so you can't just take a subset and then apply different operations. So for instance, I can't say, um, can't say uh, uh, the set of real numbers um, under addition, but then look at the subset of positive real numbers under multiplication. That's not a subgroup. So, so um, note. The operation in H is the same in G. So we cannot do this. A G is equal to um, a set of real numbers under addition, and H is equal to uh, uh, positive reals under oops, so we can't do this we can't say oh g is the real numbers under addition which is a group, and then H is the positive reals. That's the script R, the fancy R with the plus sign under both faces. So this, this we can't. Uh, so we're so this one we we can't say we can't say that. So we can have. Um, all right. So let's take a look here. Let's look at some examples. So um, Rohit, give me an example of a group. Give me an example of a group. Okay, under under addition. So uh, let's take a look. Well, so we're going to, because on your test, so we're going to call this the the row hit, um, I'm going to say proposed group, because we got to check. So you're going to do the positive integers under addition, positive integers under addition. So this is positive. Okay, positive integers under addition. So we're going to Check that out. So, uh, Nancy, if I'm going to look at the positive integers under addition, uh, do we have closure? Do we have closure? Is the sum of two positive integers a positive integer? Very good. So, we have closure. Good. And, Ty, do we have associativity? Do we have associativity? Yeah, associativity we do have. The reason you could say that with a lot of confidence is because the real one of the properties of the real numbers is the associative property applies to the real numbers, and the set of positive integers is a subset. It's a subset of the real numbers, and associativity still applies. You know, so that's that's this. That's a plus b plus c is equal to. Oops. Okay. How about row hit identity? Well, you have to be careful because zero is not considered positive. Zero is not considered positive. So, uh, so positive integers is one, two, three, four, five. So you would have to say non-negative, non-negative integers, non-negative integers. Um, so then it would have identity. So identity here doesn't have 
But let's suppose Rohit, we corrected this and said non-negative integers. What about inverse, Nancy? If, if, he, if we did non-negative integers under addition, what would the inverse of 1 be? Right, but negative one is not a negative one is not a non-negative integer. So even if we even if we corrected this, let's suppose we were to say, let's suppose I would erase it and do, but the, the other students aren't here and it's just going to be confusing to watch it. So let's suppose z. Uh, um, oops. Let's say we're going to do. Uh, Z uh, union zero. So we go the inner uh, uh, Z plus Z plus union zero under addition. The still the identity would be but the inverse no because inverse of one is negative. Okay, uh, we can't do that. So we would have to say, we would have to kind of correct. Let's see, Nancy, what would, how would we kind of fix this thing up to make it a group? So uh, the positive integers under addition doesn't work. The non-negative integers under addition does not work. But something would work if I just changed it from positive integers or non-negative integers to just plain old integer. Yeah, very good. So we're, so if I look at the, oops, if I look at the, uh, integers, integers under addition. This is a group. That's right. Now, um, Ty, just, oops. oh, hello. Oh, okay. Um, so, Ty, give me a thought here. Uh, let me make sure I didn't get any emails that said, because sometimes somebody would say emails, I can't get it. Okay. Um, uh, Ty, how, what would be a subgroup of? be a subgroup of the integers under addition. You just make a guess, you make a guess. So maybe instead of thinking in terms of positive and negative, I could think it in terms of what do we usually do with numbers? Like we two, four, six, eight, even, right. So we can do the let's look at the evens. Let's look at this is how we write even. So we'll look at uh, e, uh, under We'll look at the even. So this is this means evens, right? So let's look at the evens under addition. Let's look at the evens under addition. So Rohit, um, do we have closure? Is the sum of two even numbers an even number? Yes. The closure. Yes. Good. And uh, Nancy, what about associate property? Yes. Yes. And then, um, Ty, what about identity? What's the identity here in the e set of even integers? Yeah, and we consider zero even. So zero, so zero, zero is, zero is considered even. Okay. And what about inverse? What's the inverse of an even number like negative 10? What's the inverse of negative 10? 10. What's the inverse of 20? Good. So inverse, yes, yeah, inverse holds. So, so here we have a case of, okay, let's, let's hope that this thing extends. You know, I don't know why I have to hit it in the exact spot. Okay. So here we got uh, g is equal to uh, integers under addition, and h is equal to uh, the evens, evens under addition. Very good. So this is an example, example of group and subgroup. Now, every group has a particular 
subgroup that's really super duper boring, super duper boring. So do you, might you be able to guess what that group is? It's only one element. So, so this group has a subgroup that is considered very, um, the word begins with T, like uh, some people like to use this word to say it's very simple, like that's really boneheaded. It's trivial, right? A trivial subgroup. So, so do we have the trivial, the trivial subgroup is simply just zero under addition. So every group has a, a trivial subgroup. Every group has a trivial It's so difficult for me to do this. Okay, hold on. I have to like see it's not calibrated right. Yeah. Oh great. Yeah, wonderful. Look at that. Okay. So every group has a trivial subgroup uh, made up of just the, uh, uh, or just the identity, oops, sorry, just the identity. Okay, so every group has a trivial, and the group itself, group itself can be considered a subgroup proper subgroup. So the thing is, is so the group itself can be considered the, the group G itself can be considered a subgroup of G. So the group G itself can be considered a subgroup of G. So that we call this an improper subgroup. We call G an improper subgroup of G. Okay. Now let's hope that uh, let's uh, let's hope that uh, these extend. These extend. Oh my gosh! How did I do that? Okay. Okay, so the so the interesting problem the interesting problem is given group given group G given group G um, what are proper non-trivial subgroups? So given group G, what are the proper non-trivial um, subgroups? And uh, um, Lagrange's theorem, which we're going to prove, So Lagrange's theorem is considered one of the great theorems of all time. Lagrange's theorem says, given group G and subgroup H, then the order of H divides the order of G. So for example, so for example, a group of 25 elements cannot have a, a subgroup of 10 elements. So if I give you a group of 25 elements, it cannot have a subgroup of 10 elements. So if you're doing a true-false question on the test, 
and I say that a group of 25 elements can have a subgroup of 20, 10 elements, you would say false. That can't be true because the order of a subgroup has to divide the order of a group. And then we'll do the proof of that, and that will be on your test tube. So we're not going to do the proof today. Oh, great. Look at that. I got it the first time. Good. I found out I had to hit it right below that. Okay. So let me give you a lemma. Let me give you a lemma here. And we won't prove this lemma. We're not proving a lemma. Oops. This is lemma, and then it's 2.4.2 lemma. 2.4. You don't have to memorize that, but, but that's just the notation of the book. So a subgroup H a non empty subset H of a group G is a non empty subset H of a group G is a subgroup of G if and only if. That means both directions. So when, when you see if and only if, that means both the conditional statement and the converse are true. If and only if, two conditions. Uh, one, A and B and H, oops, B and H implies that A and B. So unless we have closure in H and then two, okay. So very important lemma. A non, if I have a non-empty subset of a group G, I have a non-empty subset H of a group G, it's a subgroup of G if and only if two conditions hold. That A and B and H implies that A time, that the product of A and B is H, that's closure, and inverse. So we have closure and we have inverse. So if I have a subset H and I check out, if the product of any two elements in H is an H, and for every element in H the inverse exists, then it is a um, that H is a subgroup. H is a subgroup. I'm gonna give you another lemma. Now, so this hap this is true all the time. This is true all the time. The next one I'm going to give is only true under some conditions. And that's going to conclude our um, that is going to conclude our lecture today, and we won't go any further. So we're going to do uh, lemma 2.4.2. Okay. So this is a more specialized case. It says if H if H is a non empty finite set of G. If H is a non-empty finite subset of G, and H is closed under the operation of G, then H is a subgroup of G. Okay. So the second lemma basically says if H is a non empty but finite subset, that's the key point, it's finite, then we only need closure. We only need closure, and that's enough to show that H is a subgroup of G. So in general, whether H is an infinite group or a, or a finite group, there's two conditions that have to be satisfied for a subset to be a subgroup, that there's closure and existence of inverse. However, if H is finite, if it's a finite subset, all we need is just the um, closure. We just need closure. So, okay, so let's just look at some examples here.
All right, so let me think of, okay, let's, let's do this one here. So examples. I'm just thinking off the top of my head, there's probably better examples. So we're gonna look at the real numbers except for zero. So this is reals except for zero. Under multiplication. So I'm gonna look at the reals except for zero under multiplication, under uh, multiplication. I'm gonna look at the reals except for zero under multiplication. Um, now that is a group, this is a group. Let's test it out. So. Um, Rohit, if I take the product of two non-zero real numbers, am I going to get a non-zero real number? Yes, so closure. So in this case, uh, look at that. This, I got to mention it to the smart board people. There's some, some defect here. So we got, uh, so group. So we're going to test out group. Closure, yes. How about um, associativity? Um, Nancy, how about associativity? Can we apply the associative property? Yeah, so associativity. Yes, I don't, I, I messed up the spell. Uh, what about identity? What's the identity of the non zero reals under multiplication? Good. And then inverse. Is it true that every number has a multiplicative, multiplicative inverse? Row hit. Like if I, the, the number A, what is the inverse of the number A if A is not zero? The multipl multiplicative inverse. Pardon me? No. One over A, right? So inverse, inverse. So A inverse is just simply one over A. Why did I have to eliminate zero? Because zero doesn't have an inverse. Zero has no inverse. So, so the, if I say that the real numbers under a multiplication is a group, the answer is false. Real numbers under multiplication is a group is under uh, real numbers under multiplication is a group is false because zero has no inverse. Okay, so let's look at a subgroup. I can look at a subgroup plus or minus one. Plus or minus one. I'm looking at a subgroup. This is finite. And do I have closure here? Is the product of any two numbers from the set one and negative one gonna be a member of the set one and negative one? Uh, row hit. So if I look at one and negative one, look at that set, and multiply any two of the in the set, I can repeatedly multiply. Yep. Yeah, so then we have closure. Yep. Yeah. So plus or minus one under multiplication is closed. Right. Therefore, group. Therefore, is a group. So. If you have a finite subset, a finite subset, and closure holds, that's all you need to show that it's group. Now, you have to prove all this stuff, which you haven't done. You know, the thing is, is, because I'm making it too easy for you guys. Like in the, this is a whole textbook, uh, abstract algebra, and everything I'm, I'm telling you has to be proved, but I'm not making you prove it, because this, you know, this is not like some super rigorous class. I'm just trying to give you a flavor of things, so. Okay, so we have to have um, closure, and so the thing is, is let's look at let's look at the the thing that we did. G, oops, we look at uh, G is equal to the set of real numbers, H is equal to the set of evens, subset of evens. So under my lemma, I only need to check two things: closure. So I'm going to look at the set of evens. Is that closed under addition? Ty, is the set of even numbers under addition closed? Meaning the sum of two even numbers, even number. Yes, so I got closure. So here, I got closure. And then I just need, yes, and then I have to check the uh, inverse. Is the inverse of any even number an even number? Yes, so, in, so the inverse of, uh, so A inverse is just simply negative A. So it is, uh, if A, even and negative a even. So I got closure and inverse. Closure and inverse are the only two things I need. Okay, hold on, let's pray that I can, oh good. So 
So remember, for subset H to be a group, we need only check closure and inverse. That's all we have to check. If If H is finite, we need only check, we only need to check um, closure. So that's the takeaway for today's lecture. The takeaway is if I have a subset of a group, so for a subset to be a group in its own right, we only need to check closure and inverse that the uh, inverse in a uh, inverse in H. So, so the, an element, its inverse is in H, and uh, uh, H, H is closed. So we have to just check to see if H is closed. Oops, that doesn't look really good here. We want to check that H is closed and the inverse is in H. So that every element inverse is H. If H is finite, we only need to check closure. So that's uh, so if H is finite, we only need to check closure. In general, we have to check closure and inverse. And that's it. And uh, let's see, it's uh, we're going to end early. So typically, we would go, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, we went 30 minutes. Uh, so we'll just do like a little half class. And then, um, so you guys uh, have a wonderful um, spring break. So uh, Rohit, are you doing anything exciting for spring break? Oh, you go to Dallas. OK, great. And Nancy, are you doing anything? Staying at home. And Ty, uh, what might you be doing? OK, very good, no problem. You all get a good rest and have a nice uh, break. So your homework is due the Wednesday after the break. Give it your best shot. I realize that you could probably consult with your friends or try to scrounge around the internet. But if you really want to learn math, just try to um, uh, do your best, do your best. And it'll just help you um, just kind of get in the uh, mathematical mindset. So math, uh, you know, if you're studying math, it's all about trying to prove things, trying to be rigorous about your arguments. In this class, it's more like a survey class. I'm just trying to expose you to some uh, ideas and so forth. So, okay. Good afternoon and have a nice day. And then everybody that's online, I am going to uh, take the lecture and then post it up for everybody. I'm not sure who all was out there in this real in the in virtual land. I, uh, so I'm going to stop the recording.